What is up film geeks and welcome back to my channel before the year 2019 is over We have one last tier ranking video of all the 12 Disney movies that came out this year Including the Marvel movies including Star Wars all of them and we're gonna put them on their proper tiers The only movie I'm not including on this list is Penguins other than that, Star Wars, Endgame, and Captain Marvel, and Disney Plus movies will be on this list. But before I give you guys my ranking, make sure to join me in the comment section. Let me know how you guys ranking compares. Hit that big thumbs up button if you guys like tier videos. And with that said, let's get started. So, first up with my tiers, we have Amazing. Meaning I love the movie. It was perfect. It was awesome. Then we have Good. Still a very solid film. Not quite amazing. Then we have Meh. It didn't quite do it, did leave a sour taste in my mouth, but not terrible. Then we have Skip It, meaning there was no real point to it. You should, don't really need to bother seeing this. Then we have What the F, as in What the F did I just watch? I think, yep, we got one movie going to that one, but here we go. Let's get started. These are in no particular order, and first up, we're starting with Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, and I'm going to put this guy in the good tier. A lot of people hated on this movie. I found it as a very solid conclusion to the Star Wars sequel trilogy. I really like what they did with it. I really like what they did with Rey's character. Lots of things were um, kind of put together after The Last Jedi and Force Awakens. But some were definitely left out. Some definitely have some problems with this movie. But I thought it was a good film nonetheless. Then we have Noel, Disney Plus movie, and I'm putting this guy in the good tier as well. I really, really like Noel, and it was one of the first things I watched on Disney Plus. I watched the first episode of Mandalorian, then Noel, back to back. I love Noel. I really, really did. It was funny. It's like the movie Elf with a female version. Anna Kendrick's playing this character, Noel, and she has to go get her brother to become Santa Claus. It's a really funny adventure, really sweet movie that uh, kind of touches your heart. It made me honestly almost cry. I was like, is this a Movie oh my god, it's a it's a really funny a big part of a uh, big problem people have with this is the CGI. I mean the reindeer in this movie they don't look good and I'm I'm here to admit that but I got past that and if you guys can pass past that too, I really think you will enjoy Noel. Next up, Lady and the Tramp, another Disney Plus, and I'm gonna put this guy in the skip it. It was fine, but the one thing I remember about Lady and the Tramp that it's extremely unmemorable. It's a Disney Live Action Remake, we know how those are going this year. Some are good, some are eh, and some are very bad. And this one just eh. I don't have much to say about it, but if you guys haven't seen it, you're not really missing out on much. If you have seen it, congrats. But other than that, that's it. Then we have Avengers Endgame. I think we all know this is going in what the... Just kidding, amazing. My favorite movie of the year. I actually have my top 10 favorite movies of the year list out. You can put it in the cards above if I remember to do that. Endgame made the number one spot. Along with another movie, won't spoil that. But Endgame's awesome. I mean, it is an emotional experience. I've watched it eight times. I saw it four times in theaters, and the amount of energy that was inside this theater was just awesome. If you guys haven't seen Endgame, I'm sorry. Spoilers are coming, but when Tony Stark died, like how he did it, it's kind of ironic because Captain America called him out back in the first Avengers, like, you're not willing to sacrifice it all, put it all in line. And that's exactly what he did. He put the team on his back, and he's like, I got it. And he snapped, and man, it's emotional. I loved every single second of Avengers Endgame. Can't wait to rewatch it for years to come. It's awesome. Then we have Captain Marvel. And I'm going to put this guy in meh. And I was going to put it in skip it, but I feel like you might need to watch it to kind of understand what Captain Marvel is. But the big problem here is Brie Larson. She actually, this movie actually made my top 10 disappointing list of the year. Brie Larson doesn't seem committed. And Brie Larson doesn't seem like she wants it. And I'm excited for her uh, performance in Just Mercy. But if you guys have seen the movie Room, you know Brie Larson can bring it. And she just doesn't bring it in this movie. And then she comes in Endgame. She's like, oh, I'm going to kill Thanos. You're like, but girl, like, our whole team's got their ass kicked. Why you got to do them dirty? Like, I don't really like you now. And I, I did not like Captain Marvel. It was boring. And every time I try to rewatch it, I'm like, I don't need to rewatch this. I'm going to turn it off. And it feels kind of like an MCU, like, um, in early days when like, Iron Man 2 wasn't too good. The first Thor wasn't too good. Incredible Hulk's okay. It's what it felt kind of like that. It was like, where the MCU is now, how every movie's pretty much a banger from here on out. Like, you think you'd be better than you are, but you're not. <sighs> Dumbo. Well, this movie is Dumbo. It is so goddamn bad. And um, when Dumbo's flying around, he's awesome. But in a Dumbo movie, he only has 15 minutes. 15 minutes of screen time, if that. Dumbo, the main character, not even in his own movie. It focuses so much on the human characters, and it's so boring, and the acting is horrendous i mean it's awful danny devito's the only good part besides him and dumbo that's it but 
Uh, Michael Keaton, man, I don't know what happens. I always give him crap for the accent he had that he didn't have, but this movie just, it was, it was beyond terrible. And I've, I've ranted and raved on the channel about it enough, but uh, I, I'm sitting here angry talking about it. So we're going to skip over it. I thought it was terrible. The story was awful. And Michael Keaton, he talks like this. And then he's talking normal. I want a cheeseburger. And then I want the steak and filet mignon. And you're like, I hate you so goddamn much. It's so bad. The Lion King. And I'm going to put this guy in the good tier. When I first saw it, I loved it. Then I saw it two more times after that. And it definitely went down a couple notches. Because if I want to watch this, the original Lion King, I'm always going to want to watch the original Lion King. I think what John Favreau did with this is beyond incredible. How it, it's awesome. I think if the animals actually could make facial expressions, it would have been much better off. I like the Lion King. I loved it when I first saw it. But more and more times I rewatched it, I was like, I want to watch the original Lion King. Still, still a good movie, though. Then we have Aladdin. And that's in the amazing tier. The only thing that person I had a problem with is Jafar. I think he was completely miscast. A young, I, I didn't like Jafar at all. But me and Masoud, who has Aladdin, thought he was great. I thought Abu, the monkey, played Abu greatly. I thought Naomi Scott as Jasmine was awesome. But Will Smith is a obviously main star here. And everyone wants to compare uh, Robin Williams and Will Smith. Like, they're, Robin Williams is fantastic, and so is Will Smith. But they're so similar because they play the same characters, but they're so different in the same way. Will Smith brings that more of a hip-hop vibe, more of that kind of rap vibe to him. And Robin Williams is obviously the GOAT, one of the best voice acting ever for Aladdin as a genie. But Will Smith, like, you got to put him up there for fantastic voice acting. And he's the best part about this movie. He's funny. He like How he changes from being genie to being human, like how Guy Ritchie did that. That was brilliant, and I loved the lad, and I really, really did. Next up, Frozen 2. I'm going to go ahead and put this guy on the amazing tier. I love the first Frozen, and so maybe I'm a little biased going in here because I love the first Frozen, everything in me. But I love Frozen 2 more than the first Frozen. I can't wait to buy this and watch it for years to come. Uh, the songs were great. Olaf, is he's, Josh Gad is so dang funny. And Jonathan Groff, he has his own song. Oh my god, it's it's great. The songs in this are hilarious, and it's more of a dark and kind of mature movie and i think the reason for that because the first frozen came out back 2013 and fans of that like i am my girlfriend and when we saw that i was about what 14 years old 13 14 years old so six years later when it came out again we're like okay frozen 2's here i'm still gonna want to go see it but i'm older now and i can actually appreciate a more mature film that's what i took from this and why it went more kind of a darker more mature route that's just me i still had there's still some silly goofy lines for kids in there and it's definitely a kid movie but I love Frozen 2, and I'm going to go with it. It went for a more mature for your boy. That's why. Maleficent 2, Mistress of Evil. And this one is going to go in meh. And you know what? I liked Maleficent, but they did the same thing that the first Maleficent did years ago, is that Maleficent is the unsung hero. And Maleficent's one of the most iconic Disney villains ever. Up there with, like, Scar and freaking Corella Corella Deville. Yeah, Corella Deville, I guess, with Karen and Ursula and Gaston. He's my favorite Disney villain. But Maleficent is awesome. She's so wicked, but she, again, is just the good guy in this. This movie does have a really good action scene. The last 20, 30 minutes it gets kind of dark, and there's lots of killing in a kid movie, but when Maleficent, if she was more evil and she actually played the bad guy and she was an unsung hero, I think I would enjoy it much more. Still liked it, but that's just a little nitpick I have here for you. Then we have Togo. I just watched this last night in order to make this video. And this guy's going to amazing tier. Willem Dafoe plays this um, dog trainer and him and his dogs. They go like sled dogs and they. it is so intense, emotional. Most people are like, I don't want to watch dog movies because dog movies, the dog always dies. And you're like, I can't say, confirm, or deny that this movie... Um, the dog dies. I can't confirm or deny that. Oh my god. It's a it's it's a good movie. It's so good. It's so heartfelt and impactful and it's emotional and it's intense. I mean there's this huge storm and Willem Dafoe and his sled dogs have to go and they have to freaking run across this frozen lake to get the medicine to get everyone else from being sick and it's so intense and like the ice is melting and the ice is cracking and it's so intense i'm not making the sound intense but this movie's intense it's intense it's intense it's intense and i was on the edge of my seat i was screaming go togo go togo and willem dafoe i love willem dafoe and a lot of people don't but i love willem dafoe and anything he does i'm so excited to watch the lighthouse whenever i get to watch it but willem dafoe is brilliant as always i love him so much and last but not least Toy Story 4, and I'm going to put Toy Story 4 on the good tier. I like Toy Story 4 a lot, don't get me wrong. I love Toy Story 3, it has a whole special place in my heart, my favorite Toy Story movie. And Toy Story 4, when I went, I was like, they don't need to make this. And it did kind of surprise me, I was like, wow, I did really enjoy it, like the characters Forky and Bunny and Ducky. 
But I love where they ended Toy Story 3. So that's what I think held me back a little bit for loving this movie. As maybe I should have loved it. I really liked it. Toy Story 4 is in a good tier. Liked it a lot. I'm going to rewatch it for years to come. But Toy Story 3 is my favorite Toy Story movie. And I love where it ended. So a little bit inside of me kind of like, oh, I can't love Toy Story 4 that dang much. But definitely still a good movie. And before I go, I'll go ahead and rank these guys for you. So first up. Um, Avengers Endgame, then Frozen 2, then Togo, then number 4 is Aladdin, number 5, Toy Story 4, number 6, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, number 7, Noel, number 8, The Lion King, number 9, Captain Marvel, number 10, Maleficent 2, Mistress of Evil, number 11, Lady and Tramp, and number 12, Dumbo. So guys, thank you so much for rocking with me on another tier video, my last 2019 tier video, except for tomorrow, I'm doing a tier ranking for all the December movies that I saw Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to smash that thumbs up button. If you guys are still watching, comment down below. Hashtag tier ranking. Uh, comment that. Thank you guys for watching. Do me a favor and go see a movie. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.